Hello everybody and welcome to Parks Bros. It's Drew here and we're back in Rolling Springs inside a Planet Coaster. We've got some updates to show you so let's go ahead and walk toward the back half of the park and go over all of the new changes that we've been able to do over the past week. Alright we've just about made it. We're next to Vampire's front entrance. It's looking great as usual. Uh, still a couple things I gotta do over here like figuring out this space but we're gonna walk past it for the newest addition to the park, we've got Planet Snoopy. It's kind of amazing to see Planet Snoopy in-game with some amazing assets that are available on the Steam Workshop as of right now. And, and I gotta say, I'm so excited to actually see something like this in-game because it allows me to really bring the history that this park might want and flesh it out in a great way. Now I've got a full timeline that's going to be placed within the park in either a park museum or like a history walk that they have at Kings Island a little bit of ways in the future right before the park is completed. But if you did not know already, this park would have been founded by the same people who founded Kings Island, Carowinds, Kings Dominion, and then eventually bought out in the same order, eventually ending up being a Paramount Park and then a Cedar Fair Park and now technically as of this year a Six Flags Park. Now, of course, one of the details that goes along with all of the different purchasing rights is the IP in the kids' areas. So, the first kids' area in the park would have been the Happy Hanna-Barbera Land, or I think it's Happy Land Hanna-Barbera, or Happy Land of Hanna-Barbera, if I remember correctly. That originally opened with Kings Island when that park opened, and it would have opened at Rolling Springs a little bit later on in its life cycle. Now, it would have stayed with that theme with multiple IPs such as the Flintstones, Jetsons, and even Scooby-Doo up until 2002 when this area would officially change over to Nickelodeon Universe underneath the ownership by Paramount. The IPs there include Rugrats, Jimmy Neutron, maybe even the Backyardigans. And eventually it would lead to 2010 when it was officially switched over to Planet Snoopy underneath Cedar Fair ownership. So this is what we have as of now. And it's kind of in the middle of another change as Planet Snoopy is slowly becoming Camp Snoopy as their 2025 or 2026 edition would be a makeover for the area, at least in my timeline. Now, we've only looked at the front entrance sign, or at least one of the front entrance signs as of now. To the right, you can see I've still got a lot to do, but there is kind of this nice barrier between Grimm's Grove and Planet Snoopy. I, I will admit it's kind of funny to have, like, the spooky section right next to Planet Snoopy, but that's something we've actually seen in real life with Boo Blasters specifically going over to King's Island again. It's right next to their Planet Snoopy, now Camp Snoopy, actually. And uh, that is going to be the same case here. It would have been a Scooby-Doo dark ride at one point in its life, and then eventually just going to the generic Boo Blasters. So that's something to look forward to in the future, a shooting dark ride themed around Boo Blasters. But I gotta say, I love the, the sight line here with the Ferris wheel there. We'll talk more about that once we get over. But the first ride you can see is this merry-go-round, since it is peanuts themed i i kind of went with the idea of it being a musical ride which most merry-go-rounds are and themed it to schroeder because schroeder i feel like doesn't get enough love when it comes to a lot of the rides in the parks so it's schroeder's musical merry-go-round and i think that that makes a lot of sense i've still got a sign to make for it um but let's go ahead and walk down the tidewater boardwalk side and you'll see this amazing asset from Again, the Steam Workshop, this Planet Snoopy Grill. I did some of my own touches to it, but the base building is awesome. It's actually based off of a building yet again in Kings Island in real life. And I gotta say, it's looking amazing. I think it fits the vibe. It's super bright and like almost pop art in a way. I love it a lot. We're actually gonna walk around Schroeder's merry-go-round here. You can see the entrance, pretty simplistic build all around even have a piano for him to play, possibly being a meet and greet spot. I'm not sure exactly how I want to handle that quite yet, so we can get into that eventually. And there's one thing I got to add around all of this land, and that's trash cans and benches. So I'll get around to that eventually. 
But you can see this Ferris wheel has a Snoopy theme. And since we're already looking at it, we might as well talk about it from its best angle. I gotta say, this view up next to the Tidewater Boardwalk is just almost perfect. I've just got a couple extra details to put in as we turn looking towards Boomerang and eventually towards the Ferris wheel yet again. This is looking absolutely amazing. I've named it Snoopy Sky Ace. Um, kind of theming it to his adventures facing off against that dreaded Red Baron. <laughs> it's really cool having all of those Snoopy assets all over the workshop. Um, even though I guess technically there's only about 15 to 20, but all of them have seen use in this area. And I gotta say thank you to all the creators that have put them into the workshop. They're absolutely amazing pieces. But this, I don't know if I've talked about it before necessarily. This would have been the first Ferris wheel at the park when the park opened in 1982. So it was technically the park's first real icon. Eventually it got taken out in 2002 and put over into this area to give another amazing vantage point of over the lake. But quickly hopping back to Tidewater real quick, you can see the new icon of the park. That is the Star of the Rockies is what I've come up with with for the name and I gotta say it takes over the entirety of the front half of the park you always know where you are because you can see it from just about anywhere and it really provides that that iconic statement piece at the entrance so don't get me wrong this was the statement originally it was the ferris wheel of the rockies is its original name and it lasted in that spot at the front entrance for 20 years now, eventually there were some things we'll talk about in just a moment that ended up pushing it over here, but it was taken out of the front entrance just to make room for that bigger, better, more thrilling even Ferris wheel in 2002. And now it spent most of its life as Snoopy Sky Ace, as you can join Snoopy going up into the air and getting some amazing views. It might be a little tall for a lot of kids in Planet Snoopy just because it's not exactly meant as a kid's Ferris wheel, it's just a plain Ferris wheel. But I will say I love the views you can get from the very top over the lake and of Anaconda, which honestly, Anaconda absolutely takes over all of the sight lines in this space. Well. If this fountain show that I downloaded from the workshop doesn't have anything to say about it, oh my gosh, it's so great. Um, we'll eventually show that off once it's ready and good to go. I'm going to do some customization to it in a bit. But you can see some super simple shading. Still have to add some TVs for advertisements because even in the, the Planet Snoopies, you, you aren't free from seeing ads all over the place in these parks. But a lot of shade over the seating section next to the grill as well. Wanted to make sure that was possible wherever I could make it. As we'll kind of sneak back around through the rest of the land towards the back side of the Ferris wheel. And looking over to the side for Charlie Brown's balloon race. This is your classic balloon ride, um, super simplistic to be honest. And the only reason I themed it after Charlie Brown in the first place was seeing this little pattern on one of the balloons here. I was like, you know what? That kind of looks like Charlie's shirt and I'm just gonna roll with it. Um, and also, why not theme it to Charlie Brown? If I could make every single balloon a different color scheme, then that would change. I would definitely go in the same vein that Knott's Berry Farm takes their balloon ride in their Camp Snoopy, and every balloon is themed to a different Peanuts character. But sadly, I can't really do that in Planet Coaster, so this is pretty much how it's going to go as of now, and there's some nice sunflowers next to it. This would have been another Hanna-Barbera ride, as well as the, the merry-go-round that originated with this kid's area, and um, that leads us to the final ride of the area so let's go ahead and head that way starting from the other side real quick before we get to the final ride i do have to mention this cool little splash pad called snoopy's splash zone i'm actually really proud of how this came out you can see snoopy on his his raft in the middle just chilling out having a good time there's some frogs on the lily pads that all squirt water actually i'll go ahead and press play real quick just so you can get an idea of what that looks like I think it's absolutely amazing being able to see all of the water effects working really well. And um, yeah, there's just tons of spots for running around, 
having a fun time in this splash pad. I think it looks amazing. Um, and right next door, of course, is your classic changing rooms and even those drier assets that you can see and they are five dollars in game not usable unfortunately by real guests in the game but i gotta say it is kind of funny that they did add that price tag added snoopy on top of him as well to kind of allude to of course him sitting on top of his doghouse now i know you can see it already there is a coaster we'll talk about it in just a moment but speaking of the doghouse this is another meet and greet spot that i have specifically for snoopy um and then of course I had to add the psychiatric help booth. I think it's just, it's it's too iconic to leave out of the land. Even if it's just a photo op, uh, I think it's still amazing. But it is cool to see everything running as I've unpaused. I will say I am getting to the point, unfortunately, where I'm going to have to be careful with how many pieces I add with new additions going forwards. So I don't know how many pieces I actually have left that I can add into this park, but I'm gonna add as many as possible. As we're looking at the roller coaster edition, Woodstock's Roly Poly Run. If you've been tuning into the Twitch streams, you know that originally this was gonna be called the Roly Poly. Now, in my headcanon, the way it ended up working out was originally there was a family wooden coaster like Woodstock Express that was called the Roly Poly before Hanna-Barbera Land became a thing. And it sat in the plot of Roly Poly Run and Snoopy Sky Ace with, of course, the other two rides eventually rounding out the land and the dark ride being added later. When Hanna-Barbera Land opened officially, there was the retheme to Scooby-Doo's Ghoster Coaster. And then eventually, by 2002, there was enough wood rot, potentially by pill bugs, funnily enough, that the ride had to close and they needed to replace it. That set in motion the idea of keeping the park's beloved Ferris wheel in the park, even if it was being replaced and being moved into part of the plot, as well as a brand new ENF Myler roller coaster that goes around twice, has a nice drop, an airtime hill, and a helix to finish it off. But I will say the queue is very simplistic overall. Just a couple advertisements and the Mr. Fans and, of course, the, the shade in there as well. Just a couple switchbacks that lead up to the station. And the exit actually has fast lane and a photo booth that you can buy your photo from. And we'll talk about the ride layout in just a little bit more detail as we head toward the first drop as you can see it go down did some custom supporting i'm actually a little bit proud of this i'm not gonna lie i think it's pretty cool and it's specifically for support vehicles to be able to get in and if there's like a cherry picker that's needed or something like that a small crane to maybe move the train if it valid it can squeeze underneath here now just fine and um we, we actually can walk around as it's hopefully going around for its second cycle Oh, nope, I caught it when it's actually stopped. No, I didn't. Never mind. I take it back. It's heading up right now. But I got to say, all the, the viewpoints of this ride, they're just really kind of cute. I, I, I love the way it all looks. And we'll get a better look on ride eventually as it goes up the airtime hill here. Just following it around. And then the final helix, which meets up with the main road. So... Most of this land, unfortunately, is right on the main path. Um, and that's something I kind of was hoping to avoid, especially with, like, the splash pad right here. But it just kind of ended up working out this way, unfortunately. But if anything, it's kind of easier for people to navigate towards it. And especially when you have a bunch of young kids, you know, theme parks are kind of a disaster <laughs> when it comes to navigating. So if anything, that will help a little bit. Um but it's not as separated as I might have liked, but that's okay. As we'll get kind of a view from the infield, you can see this amazing Snoopy and Woodstock asset here. I absolutely adore this. I think it made perfect sense to put it in the middle. And I will say, this kind of shows the transition from Planet Snoopy to Camp Snoopy more because this is more of a camp-like theme around this coaster. And it would have recently gotten this update as well. So... I think it looks amazing, but it shows the, the pure transition 
that is Planet Snoopy into Camp Snoopy with like the more muted colors, more focus on like browns, greens, and especially tree life. I think it's really cool. Also having this kind of mini cult meeting of the Woodstocks around a campfire is always fun. <laughs> um, it is it is just kind of a nice little storytelling element here um, that hopefully adds just that tiny bit of detail that would have been pretty cheap for the park to put together all, all around. And um, I think it looks really, really fun in, in, in general. But I think it's just about time to catch a ride on Woodstock's Roly Poly Run. Now we can have this nice overview and I gotta say it's pretty amazing if you ask me. Um, even though this land is fairly small, I feel like I've packed a lot of detail into the land and I'm very excited about it in general. I think it's one of the best lands I've done thus far. Um, I, it's not quite done yet. I do have plans for an amphitheater slash potential meet and greet section on this corner here. And, of course, a quick service restaurant as well as Snoopy gift shop right here as well. So that will be coming hopefully by the end of next week. Um, unless I decide to work on some of the further advancements that we have going on in the background. Um, but yeah, it's really, it's really amazing. I'm super excited to have all of this done as we can see some of the, the camera angles and whatnot. It's just, it's so it's so nice looking. It, it genuinely is just nice. And I'm, I'm very, very pleasantly surprised and happy with this section of the park. Um, I think it kind of blends the two worlds of, of Planet Snoopy and Camp Snoopy fairly well with uh, not the most subtle of transitions, I guess, but the, the abundance of trees really helps with that, thankfully. But as we zoom out, you can see some things going on in the background over here, as well as specifically two water rides. Now, this station is here just temporarily. This is where a boat tour would have happened when the park first opened. Now it's just going to be an empty shell of a station by the time it hits 2024 in the park's life cycle. And then, of course, we have this rapids ride, which... We'll talk about it more in detail later on, but it is going to be in this western slash frontier section. Still deciding a, a name for it between Lulu City, Lulu Ghost Town, Lulu 1882. Let me know your thoughts on any of those names. They're all named after an actual ghost town in the Colorado Rockies, right next to Grand Lake, Colorado, because that's officially where the park is taking place as it goes through an autosave real quick. But the terrain made sense, the placement made sense. Just everything lined up really, really well when I found Grand Lake while I was searching for a couple hours. And I'm trying my best to kind of bring that local history into the park itself. So taking one of the close ghost towns and theming an entire area about it makes a lot of sense. It's just like Calico at Knott's Berry Farm. It, it makes perfect sense to bring in an actual ghost town's history that's nearby into the park itself. So this entire triangle that's been cut out pretty much is going to be that ghost town slash frontier theme. It's going to be really cool. And it will include Barnstormer, the B&M invert over here. And as we walk through more of the area, we have Xanadu, our wooden coaster right here. Ishtar, which is the new name for our Skyrocket 2. And of course, Vesuvius and Icarus. This is all going to be part of the same land. It's going to be called the Cradles of Civilization. Kind of like three different mini lands. There will be a, a China mini land, a Rome slash Greek mini land, and of course, a Babylon mini land. Um, so I'm excited to get all of that figured out in the future. And you can actually see in the background here, this is the original Roly Poly. I didn't rename it, I guess, but 
this is what originally fit in the plot of Woodstock's Roly Poly as well as the Ferris wheel. So it would have sat like right here, just about maybe, maybe turned a little bit more, but something like this, this is what it would have looked like at the time um, when the park first opened. Just to give you kind of an idea, and actually while we're talking about it, this will be a multi-park build. So realistically, I'm building the park for this year, 2024, gearing up for the 2025 season, and eventually, or I guess I should say pretty soon after, I will be making multiple versions for the park throughout the years, like its opening day look, or 2002. So maybe every 20 years will, will be a version of the park, so I'm excited to release those all in conjunction on the Steam Workshop if you want to check them out for yourself. But it will be amazing once this is all finished up because you'll actually be able to see in your own perspective the park at different parts of its life, and I'm really excited to bring that to you guys. Now, there is some changes over in Kitty Kingdom. We've moved a couple rides around. Phyllis has been moved over a little bit. Pay no attention to, to that thing. Don't worry about it. Um, Force 10 is getting its own area over here. So I'm really excited to get going with the rest of this park. I would say I'm about 50, maybe 60% finished, possibly up to 70%. We'll see how much theming I actually put into the rest of the lands here. But if you have any suggestions for anything, please let me know down in the comments. If you help out, I will make sure to put your name in the special thanks area. Your name will be ingrained forever in the bricks of the front entrance of Rolling Springs. Regardless, though, I want to say thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. It's been an absolute joy putting this park together, and I can't wait to hopefully finish it up before Planet Coaster 2 comes out. And heck, even if I don't finish it up quite in time, this park will still get completed, at least as far as I can go. But with that all said, if you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, we'll see you on the next ride.